I wanna be the best in the game, invest in my name Check no restraints, I'm obsessed with the pain I ingest, I retain, assess and I change Possessed by the thought I'll be free one day From society's restraints, money, clout and fame Mud disease, a plague, we all love to hate Have to play the game, have to make a name All our insecurities are on This display. is war with the enemy Think that it was meant to be Hello and welcome listener to another episode of Tactical Awareness We're back with season 2, episode 2 It's the evacuation breakdown uh, I'm joined by fellow hosts, Owen and Dan, for us to uh, basically talk out this new mission, it's uh, sort of like ins and outs, what we think would be a good list for it, and sort of um, dive in and uh, make it so that after a couple of game experiences, we we give our thoughts on this latest ITS-15 mission. So let's see what's going on with the boys, and we'll get this underway. <laughs> what do you think, I made of <laughs> No, no, I'm just glad that you would rather lay on a, a, or, you know, have like a bad session being stabbed with needles instead of paying for a membership. It makes me really happy. I, I get to like nap. It's like a nap in the middle of the day. It's wonderful. Do they do your face? Like to get rid of your tension headaches? Is it one of those places or do they just do? Oh yeah. She's like poking. Oh, yeah. She's like, oh, poking between your eyes and stuff. Giving you, giving yeah. the whole business eye. Eh? And like, put like and this is just so you can go on an elliptical machine, just so you can get it. Just so you can well, like... It's actually a pretty intense workout, like guided. And it's Shit, like, yeah, I sweat. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to Sweatcast. Yeah. <laughs> welcome to welcome to, to whatever Groupon dance part of to get into gym membership. Hey, don't shit on Groupon. I'm not <laughs> shit on Groupon. You're, you're, Groupon has been the source you have, you of many, have, many fun cheap activities. You're a cheap. Yeah. Okay. I'm so into this. I'm so into your like middle aged uh, couponing lifestyle. This I've is always great. Been hey, everybody. I've always been middle aged. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that tracks and it checks out the math the math checks out hey everybody welcome to another wonderful episode of its season 15 the breakdowns uh we're breaking down uh, i believe it's escape what's it escape hatch escape room escape something last launch last launch. no not last launch. one before that the one where you have to kidnap people isn't it uh evacuation evacuation i wanted to say escape that's why my my brain was short-circuiting there for a second uh so evacuation i'm joined by fellow hosts owen who is extra sexily voiced tonight because of his wonderful cold that he has and dan who is clearly willing to buy a bridge from anyone so uh we're gonna break down the new season's new missions in the next couple episodes and we're doing evacuation today which is like a enhanced rescue who's who's here who's played that mission yet i have not played evacuation yet uh yeah i have not played it and I, don't, I don't hate my life yeah, i'm not <laughs> in any rush to play it either no one's in any rush to play it. great so we are the most qualified group of individuals i played the other two i have not yet played evacuation so i'm very excited that uh we we are going to give the sagest of advice on evacuation today before we do that though we're going to get um through what everybody worked on this week we're going to get through some news and announcements because we got some some preview clippy clips of all the its objective cards uh and then we're going to dive into the episode so what do you guys got going on infinity wise last little while infinity wise i'm building a vampire blood bowl team right now i'm also building the blouses that's <laughs> <laughs> I'm painting them all like as Prince's basketball team from the Chappelle skit from Charlie Murphy's True Holiday <laughs> Stories, and they're led, and they're led by Prince Prince, the artist. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. I'm actually joining the up the Bubble League again this season. Tremendous, like whatever. And then my team name is No You Suck. That's fair. Yeah, the new the new sculpted vamp our team is maybe my favorite sculpted team like of the last couple of years. It is tremendously sculpted. They're fantastic. They are literally all wearing poofy poofy blouses like pirate shirts they're all dressed like jerry when he's a pirate in, in seinfeld uh welcome to blood bowl cast <laughs> bowl cast but otherwise otherwise i got all my yujing together and shit i have a lot of models it's like i don't, I don't even want to count how many there are but they fill my hobby desk entirely and uh i have a lot of painting to do and i've been i've been motivated to start painting a little bit yeah and, i am uh, too 
Well, I think that the uh, I think that the 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 new army thing is what's got me excited. I managed to hammer out like a whole bunch of my um, like at work construction projects, and so I'm kind of slowing down for Thanksgiving because um, Thanksgiving will just pass me guys here. Actually, no, it won't. Maybe we'll start posting these on a different day if we're doing them on Mondays. Maybe we'll start posting these on Wednesdays. That feels like a good idea because otherwise we miss this week. I guess what we'll do, we'll post on Wednesdays. Um, and that will allow us to like keep up this rhythm, I think. Yeah. Uh, or maybe Fridays. We don't do Fridays. Well, I'll talk about it offline. I don't um, care. but <laughs> it's not right now. But I, I got my hands on uh course boys kind of to send along some of the new miniatures. So I have the Robotniks. Um, Ooh. the new uh yeah, the new Robotniks, which makes it very, very enticing to do um some Ariadna stuff, but I'm going to stick to my Yuching. I've been uh, like uh, basically like trying to do that thing where I write a list based on the um, the base cap that I have. So I have two packs of the 25 mil resin bases, the infinity bases, like the, to the, the, the deck plating and stuff. One pack of the 55s and one pack of the 40s. So you get two 55s, four 40s, and I've got like 20, 25 mil bases. And I want to do a, like a, a hack Islam army where the hard model cap that I can paint is those bases, like boil it down to the best, basically 26 models on that base size that I can um, and like paint them up. And so that's my plan. And I want to like, I want to pick a faction and start with them. So I'm probably going to start with, I think, Oh, when you said I start with Baram. Yeah. Yeah. Start with Baram. So I, so I play the thing I played against the most. Yeah. And you get to find all of the things that are the challenges. Like, you get used to the things that are like, oh yeah, that just happens and then I die or whatever. But then you play on the other side and you're like, if this doesn't happen, I'm going to lose. Yeah. Well, that's what I was, I was thinking what we could do is if I, if I put that out there as like the base cap, let's say I'm going to start with like 10, I'll start with half of it. So like the first list I write, the maximum would be 10, 25 mil bases, two 40 mil bases and a 55 mil base. And we work from there. And I got have a hell of a time trying to fill that 55. I guess you have an Evo bot. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's the I only 55 in that faction. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It'll be the Evo bot for sure. Yeah. It'll be the it'll be the big bots. Uh there's no there's no Yojimbo or no like bike guys. That's only in regular because uh Z Z Yeka and Zubia or whatever. They're in Vanilla the only. Yeah. Vanilla yeah. only. Hmm. Well, maybe we'll take some some call ins. What, what you guys? Maybe maybe I'll just take the base cap off and just, just put a call in as to to what everyone thinks the best, um, the best uh, like just send us your ITS codes. I'll do a new document maybe, and send us your ITS codes for what you think the best starting Barom list would be for me to paint up that would bleed over to everything else. Like it would have the most like universal crossover, and we'll debate them in the next episode. And I'll I'll paint that. I'll put it in the, the listener's hands and they can make me paint a list because I have access to pretty much whatever I want to paint. So you guys make a list. The listeners are stupid. You can't trust them. No, but that's the point is we get to debate about it, right? We have multiple, we'll have multiple lists and we'll look at them and we'll debate what the, what the boil off is going to be. And then I'll paint that. We'll do that. Uh, Cause I've not done any, any uh, infinity stuff really, except for collecting and, and organizing everything. I got everything uh, out of packaging and, up on the um up on the racks basically so that it's all him on place and it's all organized by army and that's been about it for me what about you dan oh no you already said you've been painting yu ching yeah i uh or I, got you get of, done. I got most of like the orange painted on a lot of the guys like i have like some kind of generalized kind of colors that i've kind of been doing and like man that griff found orange oh it's beautiful yeah they're so back. great they're so great. I, I I'm in the the weird situation where I've been like, been doing the, like the secondary color as like the teal as you normally see it on like the Hessian like capes, but then right, right. I had the blue otherwise. But I'm like I don't know which one I like better. Like I think I like the teal pops a little bit more. I always love green, but then like the, all the monk capes I just put straight green. So I'm I'm, I'm having some fun experimenting here and there, um, and mostly it was like I spent like two to three hours one night of like what models are these what is what's this this guy I'm like i have like an alternate model and i'm like what what the heck is this <laughs> yeah unit, is re unit recognition in um in yuching is a lot like in ariadna where it's like it's just another guy with cargo pants <laughs> like what is this so so yeah it's a little challenging i got it mostly there um there's some that i can recognize pretty well but no i'm i'm pretty excited to play them and i have like 
I just need to play more. So agreed. All I'm my, waiting for this. I, camping has been all my <laughs> end of season camping is done now. So you're into shoulder season now. Yeah, it's gonna yeah, be yeah. it's gonna be over. So it, it, when they get to the mountains, there's a high risk of death uh, in the winter time. So you're not gonna be there, camping there, as much. There was a bear attack this last weekend. Wicked. Was, That's the most and, Canadian uh, thing I've heard today. There, well, I mean, a couple died in their dog. You know, so that's very canadian of them <laughs> were they canadians were they lost <laughs> or were uh, they not no they were experienced hikers oh man and uh the bear didn't act defensively really it didn't look like a regular defensive attack hmm. you know really weird and uh That's they super killed, weird like they had to kill the bear obviously yeah, yeah they put it down yeah well anytime but, it attacks a person they put it down they yeah, weren't really, they weren't really okay at that point. That's crazy. But uh, it was on the opposite side of the park that I was at. So. Well, that's great. Thanks for thanks for really killing the mood. Oh no problem. <laughs> Good job, Dan. <laughs> so so uh, everyone's getting excited to um, play, but I think we're all kind of waiting for these new decks. Um, I haven't ramped up yet because. I played one to two, two games now of, of ITS 15 and we used the old decks. And let me tell you, looking at this spoiler, there is a lot of new stuff, uh, quite a few new um, and new ish like rules uh, for, for these cards. Um, and why don't we take turns going through them? It looks like there's 24 new cards or is it 20? Mm, no, 40 new cards. Wait, where is this posted? Where can I see this? In the chat. I want to post it. You were ignoring it because you were too busy doing Dan stuff. Look. Looking for coupons. Yes. Wait, it's posted in the chat? Oh, look at that. Look at that. I found it. Okay. I'm ready. Thanks for coming. I've played like almost 10 games of ITS 15. Well, you played an event over the weekend, didn't you? And then I've been playing once ish each week as well. <clears throat> what What do you think? So just just general overview with tw- forty new cards and no duplicates. What do you think the? Because it looks like maybe half of these are brand new, brand new, like suspected infiltration, <laughs> um, vigilance. What else we got here? Uh, HVT assassination. We've got Nan. No, now Nan- is old. Industrial espionage. Combat support, reverse engineering. Mm, those are all old. We've got, oh no, those are doubles. Looks like there are some doubles here, actually, of some of these. There's 20. There's 20 total. Yeah, so you could D20 this, maybe. I, uh, I, oh, like you cut, that... you, you cut the image in half. That's why I'm looking at all these okay. cards and thinking there's 40 cards, but it looks like it's the same image. No, just cut there's in half. just zoomed in more. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. That's, that's why I thought there was 40. Also, there's only 20. Yeah. Cause you just put this in twice, which is very handy. And thank you for doing that. Um, it's, it's pulling back on how over reliant you needed to be on hackers. There's so many more that are not hacker dependent. Like hackers are still cut popping up all the time, but. There's more that are not just I brought a hacker and I can do half of them. Yeah, there's 20 and it looks like mm, one one of them is a hacker. No, there's only no, there's more than that. There's HB espionage is hacker only. One, two for programs, but it can data also be scan is hacking only. Yeah. But there's uh, only two that are only suspected infiltrate. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Two that are only hackers. Five can be done by hackers. It looks like about a quarter, six, seven. Yeah, seven can be done by hackers, but yeah, only two are, are hacker only. Huh. <clears throat> well. Hacker's still strong, but not great. Yeah. The other thing I noticed is that um, you have a bunch of things that can be done by peripherals now. So HVT inoculation can be done by a peripheral. Um. Combat support cannot be done by a peripheral. Combat support's the one where you, uh, it's basically a blend of the ones where you would doctor or engineer something back to life. It's it's either, but it has to be done by you, not the peripheral. So you can shoot a gizmo kit at somebody, but you can't um, use the peripheral to get them back to life. HVD inoculation being done by a peripheral is 
yep. as well. Yep. Same with reverse engineering can be done by a peripheral as well. So both those ones that almost no one ever took or did, <laughs> being able to do in the peripheral actually makes it possible now and actually makes peripherals really good at doing classifieds because they're fast and all mimetism. It just means the three points I've been using on HMGs is probably going to need to turn into something else. Mm -hmm. Suspected mm -hmm. infiltration can do it too. This objective can be completed by a peripheral, but without the plus three whip mod. Uh, but you have to do it to a rem or tag. Does the Wait, trooper must be in silhouette contact with an enemy trooper whose true type is not in remote or tag? Spend a special skill or an order to make a successful whip roll. So you can do it. Basically, you're looking at a corpse. Uh, it could be anybody, but it looks like it's it's you're gonna do it to corpses, and then I look at any other ones that are peripheral only or per peripheral as possible. Uh, I think that's it. But having three that can be three that were almost never taken that be done by peripherals now is huge. So let's go through all of these just to notice any changes. the The format change of having the designated trooper tag at the top is really nice. Um, I don't love that it still has, I, don't, I think one agrees with me, um, Intelcom. <laughs> I think Intelcom is just a bad rule in general, just being able to put points in his own. Um, I don't know if you guys agree with me. Is it Intelcom or is that it just is, a it number is still one Intel, through 20? There's still in, no, there's still Intel, Intelcom in, um, oh, yeah. in missions, I'm pretty sure. So it would still be Intelcom, I believe. Wait, is this where like you give up your... Uh... Yeah, so you, you opt out of having your classified at the beginning of the game in order to gain whatever value is printed on it as points that you could then put onto an objective later on. Yeah. Any objective? Do it have to have a troop there? To add to it has to be in a zone. So it has to the, yeah. the, the mission will have the Intel Com special rule. So in in instance New Order on page 23. Uh, the mission capture and protect has Intel Com card provisions. This classified objective with the symbols cog give an extra objective point, but only if the mission has less than 10 objective points. Other, other like because because Intel Com can be using the symbols. Um, let me just look at frontline because I believe that, that has Intel Com as well. Uh, acquisition for line. I think with the zone used to have Intel Com in it. And if it does, it does. If it doesn't, frontline, Intelcom card, support and control. Um, before the beginning of the game, but after choosing first classified objectives, players in front of their adversary, they're going to use a classified Intelcom. The player rolls a die, and the one who gets the highest score can use it first. Uh, at the end of the last game round, when the players count up their points in initiative order, the player can use their Intelcom card in support and control mode. It adds the value of it to the zone. Yeah, so it still works the same way. So Intelcom still around. Oh, so uh, like I didn't even realize that was a thing before. Yeah. Like, you <laughs> yeah. have like a crappy objective that you can't do. You have to have at least one model in the zone oh, okay. to okay. add the points to it. So you can't grab a naked zone and, and win okay. with that. But like That's you can a have a difference. but you can have a makes... peripheral in there for three points and then Intel Comp to 20 or something like that. Yeah, I guess. Which can be huge at the end of the game. Um and, and I think uh, both Owen and I have suffered from someone Intel Comics at the end of the game and swing like a like eight two victory into like a four four tie or something like that. It doesn't yeah, happen. it's not as bad as that good. one season where it was uh, you could you could give up your classified and instead of Intel, it would remove the specialist trait from someone. That was bad. <laughs> well, or, or when the scoring jump. when the scoring for frontline was like four three one, that was you know what I mean. Like when the far zone was with four and they could swing the far zone off you all of a sudden and the whole far zone's gone and you've you've lost half your points basically. That was a that was a bad one too. Yeah, it's not like that. So that's gone. Um, and then let's actually just start talking, I guess. There are the symbols still. So like what kind of symbols are on here? There's like the medical symbol, the provision symbol, the target symbol. I think that's Wait, it. Is that still a thing where they can like cancel each other out or? They can in certain missions. Again, the mission they call the like they're, they're very rarely relevant, but the mission will call off like that symbol cancels out some other symbol or something like that. I feel like it's just like a luck thing. Well, that. of course, it's a luck thing because you're dealing out the deck, and then you're if the mission has that from the deck, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's it's a bit chaosy. It's a bit chaos theory. Um, it, well, I mean, it's so niche that you wouldn't pick it because you're like, like well, this one will cancel out this one because you don't even know what your opponent has exactly, exactly. Because you're like, I'd rather just get the one point because I can complete this objective. Yeah, 
Yeah. Um, so let's take a look at the first one. So we'll just do these in numerical order. Uh, number one is HVT follow-up. So it's medium infantry or heavy infantry can do it. I like that that's the classification, that it's just like a generic classification, not one of the like support troops or spell like it's it's just like a baseline designation. Uh, the designated trooper must have an enemy HVT model inside the zone of control, spend a short skill or an order and make a normal whip roll. And if the trooper has line of fire to the HVT, apply a plus three to the whip roll. So you can basically anywhere in your zone of control, whip check to follow up, or if you can see it, plus three. Seems pretty simple. I like that one. I like to get a bonus now. Uh, I think it gives bonuses to whips for making classifieds happen is great because it's more reliable dice. Uh, Net undermine uh, number two. It is veteran troop, elite troop, or chain of command. Long service, of course, gives anyone with the name this as well. And designated trooper must be totally inside the enemy half of the table. Spend a short skill of an order and make a successful normal whip roll. So it's the same as before. Number three is identity check. Trooper with a bio visor, multi spectral visor, or sensor. Did it always have sensor? Was sensor always in there? I think it was. I was just visors before. It, I think it was always in there, but no yeah. one brings the sensors. That's true. Um, the, if they did, they aren't now. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't it true must have an enemy HVT model uh, inside the zone of control and line of fire, spend a short scale and make a successful normal whip roll. And then capture. Um, which is veteran troop, elite troop, and chain of command uh, for number four. As the end of the game, a designated trooper must be in non null state and in silhouette contact with an enemy trooper. And he must be in a null or immobilized state. It's just being base to base with a corpse. And then HVT kidnapping, number five. At the end of the game, the designated trooper must have a civivact enemy HVT. <laughs> that one still sucks because the, you're at a big, I think it's a whip penalty. Or no, you don't get the plus three whip to civivact an enemy HVT. Um, and it's veteran troop, elite troop, or chain of command. Like, wait, remind me how Civivac works. You, you have to make so with the friendly HVT, you get a whip plus three roll. Um, remotes can't do it. And whenever you move the Civi, the, like you can't be in a uh, fire team, you can't be like with a peripheral or like that. Um, and whenever you move, you place the HVT in base contact with you at the end of your move. So you basically pick them up and carry them. Yeah, but you need to be base to base and do a whip plus three. Well, no, because this is the enemy HVT. It's just an, it's oh. a basic whip roll. Okay. So it's, so it's inherently hard to do, yeah. <laughs> but Except only the... Or anyone in the fire team. No one can do it in a fire team because you can't see me back in a fire right, team. Right. So, yeah, everyone can do it except for remotes or people in the fire teams. Yeah, or people who have a, um, I guess, sink trooper. Uh, HVT inoculation six is doctor paramedic. Uh, it's doctor designated trooper must be in cell contact with HVT. It's been a short skill. And make a normal whip at plus three, and you can do it with a peripheral. And there's no loss of the plus three mod for using a peripheral on that one either, which is a big deal and way easier. So I like that. Zavatage, uh, anyone with a D charge, uh, listen, all y'all. It's after the initial roll before the deployment, privately choose a building or other piece of scenery. It's totally inside the enemy half of the table. Um, so that used to be, I think, in the enemy deployment zone, and now it's enemy half of the table. And then place a decharge in the piece of scenery. When the decharge detonates, no saving rolls are made against the piece of scenery. So uh, no decharges was always in half. It was half? I thought it was holding the deployment zone. Oh. Is it mapping I'm thinking of? Maybe it's mapping that had to be in the deployment zone. Uh, combat supports number eight. It's a doctor, paramedic, or engineer. And get an allied trooper to recover one point of wounds or structure by using the doctor engineer skill and using a med kit or gizmo kit. But you can't do it with a peripheral. So oh, they've combined those two old them. guards. They hmm? added the med kit gizmo kit, didn't they? They did. Yeah. They so added they, they added they they combined the two and they added med kit gizmo kit, but they don't let you do it with the peripheral still. So if you've got McMurrow and you've got paramedics, <laughs> this is the one. This is the one you take. And you just shoot paramedics out of until he stands up. Or shoot uh shoot gizmo, or med kits out of until he stands up. It's the one model in the game you always bring a paramedic for. <laughs> I really like that change because like like Owen was talking about it, like play the game. It was like, ah, I got this objective. You're like, no, you didn't. You use the gizmo kit. You're not allowed to do that. Like, yeah, it was so like that, randomly yeah. shitty that you couldn't do it that way. It, it's because the point is basically someone recovers. How you do it shouldn't be such a huge deal. Um, yeah. So adding that in, and, and and I think it's okay to not let peripherals do it because it because it's so broad. It doesn't matter what's in your army because like. 
for instance, I couldn't get the bring someone back with wounds when I played my OSSS because everyone's got structure because like all the Dakinis are you know, like not human uh, and they were the ones that were always fighting and the ones that would go down. So it, it's it's nice that it's combined. I think it's a better change to have them all in one card. Yeah. HVT Espionage for a hacker. This is the one hacker only one or one of the two, sorry. Uh, number nine, a hacker must be or have an enemy HVT model inside zone of control, spend a short skill and make a normal web checker minus three mod. So minus, they made it harder to do. That's new. I don't think it was minus three before, was it? No. Yeah, uh, I don't think any of them had a negative mod before. Interesting. Yeah, some of them had the, you didn't get the plus three against certain things, like the Kate, the city back. It's you're not plus three against the enemy HVTs, but yeah, nothing had a negative mod. They made, they made hackers suffer. I mean, like most hackers are like, 13 to 15, which means you're I discovered my diva hackers 15. All my divas are with 15 to the day. I'm like, what? For yeah. real? <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh so then HVT reverse engineering for engineers. This one you can do with a peripheral now too, and it's being uh silhouette contact with an HVT and get a short whip check at plus three. So again, they made that one easier too. I liked it all the H the enemy HVT ones, which I don't think I've ever taken because they're all impossible, are a lot easier. Uh, industrial espionage is engineer, Ford observer, veteran troop, or elite troop. So specialists or veterans and elites, which is kind of neat. Um, the designated trooper must be in silhouette contact with an enemy trooper with the engineer special skill or whose troop type is heavier infantry, remote, or tag, and spend a short skill of an order and make a successful in the whip roll at plus three. Uh, this objective can be completed by a peripheral but without the mod, and the player is allowed to declare the skill during an engaged state. So basically, be touching something robot-y from the enemy army that's unconscious and then check it out. I like that non-specials could do it too. Uh, do you, do they have to be unconscious? They don't, but they would trigger an arrow <laughs> if they weren't. So yeah, I but mean, like, yeah. just they watch could, engineer. Just if you want to get yeah, throws his rent at the head of the dick guy. drags in the dirt while you do it. You can absolutely do that. Yeah, I mean, it's point point to point. Points of point. You're not wrong. Um, I would probably wait until they can't fight back. <laughs> I would apply. <laughs> st I would apply stab reaction. first. No, I know. I get, I get what you're saying. I would apply stab to a remote first, then go check it out because they got multi levels of unconscious, so I can't accidentally kill it. Oh yeah, ideally, yeah. Yeah, but, ideally you go hunt, you hunt, to hunt some flash bot, and then go dig in its insides. Um, nano espionage for twelve is engineer, doctor, paramedic, and then designated trooper must make a successful BS attack roll with a med kit or gizmo kit against the enemy specialist troops. This role must fulfill the requirements of a BS attack and has no effect. So basically, that's really different. But I like that it's shoot medical bullets at the other team. <laughs> Makes me really happy. And it's med kit or gizmo kit. It has no effect, but you basically have to shoot their body. Um, and it has to be a specialist. So they're probably going to be alive. But like you're just shooting shooting stun darts, like like med darts at them. I don't know. I like that it's it's just funny. It's a funny one, and it gives more things for gizmo kits and med kits to do, which I think is a good thing because they couldn't do much before. It reminds me of like the the little stun gun in like Perfect Dark for N64. I mean yes. that one made your vision blurry. But yeah, basically, yeah, you're like yeah, I can't yeah. hurt you, but ah, I'm gonna make your life miserable. Yeah, or the the Deus Ex dart gun. <laughs> that one too. Um, Interestingly, there are some models like Pandora couldn't do this one. She has a med kit, but she's not an engineer. Oh, no. Is she an engineer? No, she's a hacker. So she's not an engineer, doctor, or paramedic. So like, even though she has the gear, she can't actually do it. So you have to be careful with some models that might have those pieces of gear that can't actually do the skill. Yeah, because it does specify at the top of the card. Yeah, those are designated troopers. Mapping. Uh, this is forward observer, hacker, or that's it. And then a Disney trip must be in silhouette contact with a piece of scenery that is totally inside the enemy's deployment zone. Yeah, it's the same as before. Spend a short skill of an order and make a successful whip roll. Still easy if you have parachutists that are FOs or hackers. Uh, hard if you're not. Data scan for a hacker. I uh, must spend a short skill of an order and make a successful whip roll against an enemy trooper inside the zone of control. This roll is a comms stack, so it can be avoided with a reset. Did they change that? You're thinking of Spotlight. Spotlight's gone. The one where you'd have to Ford Observer Spotlight something? No, but they could always still reset that. They could always reset. Uh, they could uh, reset. Telemetry it okay. is Ford Observer gone. Spotlight. Yeah, yeah. It's not it's gone. Oh, it's still there? I just didn't see it. Yeah, um, number 16. I think they couldn't. I think you're right because it wasn't actually a hacking attack before. So that's probably new. 
Uh, HVT designation, make two successful port observer or two successful spotlight rolls against a single enemy HVT model. Uh, the player is allowed to declare the type of attack against HVTs. So it's basically telemetry for HVTs and it's FOs at spotlight hacking programs for hackers. And then telemetry, which is what I was thinking of before, which is make accessible port observer or spotlight roll against enemy trooper and it's FOs or the spotlight hacking program. It's the easy one. And then the easiest one, yeah, Predator. <laughs> Just doesn't a trooper, dash. Uh, so no one can do it. Uh, during the game, the player must be, uh, put at least two enemy troopers into unconscious or dead state by performing CC attack actions. So you got to kill some, kill two people. And so you that, can cancel them by bringing them back if they're unconscious. Um, no coup de gras. No, you can oh, coup de yeah. gras in a dead state. It, oh, no, you have to perform a CC attack. Yeah, it's, that's true. Yeah, because you can't coup de gras if it's not a CC attack. But uh, wait, 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 wait. But can you, can, can you cancel it? During the game, the player wants to put at least two enemy troopers into unconscious or dead state. Oh no, no, you wouldn't cancel it then. No, because it's just no. putting them into the it's putting them into the state. It's not at the end of the game, they have put them into the they are in that state and we're put there by the sky. Now so no, you're if right. You brought you the same it. guy back and you got him down again with that count. Yes. Uh you say no two troopers. No, because they're not two troopers then. Yeah, it has to be two different troopers. Put at least two enemy troopers. And now with the designated trooper being a dash, does that mean anyone or it doesn't? Acquire a designated trooper and two different people can do it. I think it means anyone. I the only log it'd be no one <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> I think well, it has to be what anyone. I mean is like if one guy on one side of the board did a CC attack and killed somebody, and another guy on the other side of the board did a CC attack and killed somebody, is that good for predator? Or is I that think so thing? because it says the player must put at least two models. Yeah. Okay. So I think I think it's the if it's the player and not a model, then if you have two different models to each kill one, I think that qualifies. Which was yeah, different from the old sense. one. There's the designated one. trooper is there is no designated trooper. That's okay. right. Yeah, the player must do it. So yeah. okay, that makes, that checks out. So melee murder. Bring all of your tiger beasts. Uh, suspected infiltration, which is doctor, hacker, veteran troop, or elite troop, and the designated trooper must be in silhouette contact with an enemy trooper whose troop type is not a rem or tag. Spend a short scale of an order and make a successful normal whip roll with a plus three mod. This objective can be completed with using a peripheral, but without the plus three. Uh, and that's it. So just basically check out a person who's not our motor tag, the opposite of the other one. And you can still kill yourself doing it. Yeah, by accident. <laughs> uh, vigilance, designated trooper, medium infantry or heavy infantry. A designated trooper must be inside the zone of control of an enemy trooper who is totally inside the enemy half of the table. Spend a short skill of an order and make a successful normal whip roll. And if the trooper has a line of fire of the enemy trooper, apply a plus three mod to the whip roll. What do we think of that one? It's it's new, so it's like get to the a trooper who is on the other half of the board, inside your zone of control, and then make a whip roll. And if you can see them, you get plus three. It seems really easy. Yeah, as long as you have medium or heavy infantry, which I think everybody does. Like, yeah, not not a lot of factions don't take at least don't one even, of those. <clears throat> I don't even know if you can make a list now that doesn't include them. There's just yeah, not enough medium, light mediums infantry. Are everywhere. <laughs> mediums are absolutely everywhere. Actually, Baron probably could, to be honest. I think Baron's probably the only, only factions that can. Uh, assassination. Uh, it's HVT assassination. So this is interesting because it's the lieutenant and NCO or chain of command. This is actually pretty hard to do. The designated trooper must have an enemy HVT model inside their line of fire and zone of control, spend a short skill of an order, and make successful normal whip roll. If they're all successful, remove the HVT from the game table because you just kill a civilian. <laughs> <laughs> bonus if the designated troopers in select contact must plus three here whip roll this one's a war crime like just do a war crime is the name of this card and it's also in telecom for 20 and it has like the biggest restriction for who can do it because it has to be an nco chain of command actually nco in some factions is not a restriction basically there's so many ncos i mean you always have a lieutenant so it's always doable yes but like <laughs> doable and a good idea are two separate things i'm just saying when you have like draw two cards and we're like is it doable yes yes yeah, you're wrong yeah, yeah 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 for sure and there's sometimes like like my gator could walk over and do it because he's an nco my gator could just go over and war crime <laughs> some civilian could you imagine to be like oh no the gator's not nco the bull tracks nco for thinking who's an nco 
Is my gator an NCO? I think there's a gator NCO option actually. Oh, a bunch of a bunch of a bunch of tags are NCOs. Isn't yeah. the uh, isn't the Zeta an NCO? Yeah. It, oh it, Jesus! Yeah. Just go over and Robocop him. Yeah. <laughs> just add two hundred nine that guy. You have nine <laughs> seconds to comply. You have eight seconds to comply. Yeah, that's uh, that's gonna be it's gonna be something. Um, so what do we think about these new cards? I like it. I like that it reduces the hacker overpower. Not overpowered, but like overbenefited. It it. Yeah, it's yeah. it's. I think it spreads out the value of who can do what, and it means that I I honestly don't. It would be very hard to make a list that you draw like one or two classifieds and not be able to do at least one of them. I like that. Oftentimes, you'll have a a doctor or an engineer, but not both, and so not having the stupid luck of the draw of ah, if I was only playing my other list or. I but I only draw the other one. Like I think that's a real quality of life change, which is really nice. But it, it looks like a lot of them are just a bit more doable. And it it it's like, oh, okay. I don't have to rely on the control of the HVT and at the end of the game for that extra point. Yeah, they definitely looked at like which ones no one were ever doing. Like the like the inoculate HVT and HVT restaurant engineering, I don't think ever got done. Like ever. <laughs> it's just way better. And they condensed yeah. some of the like heal or repair are now just the same thing. Yeah, yeah. You can heal and repair now. Yep, absolutely. So yeah, I think positive changes. I would have liked a little bit more mix up, I guess, of like some more radical changes. I don't know what that would look like, but just kind of like just new stuff so that your regular tactics, maybe you have to think about it and mix some things up to make sure you can complete the new ones. But at the same time, these are kind of tried and trust tested and they kind of just like small changes can also be good to make it more balanced for competitive play so yeah yeah i agree i'm, I'm into it i like the idea that um overall the uh, the classified deck just looks less burdensome you know what i mean to certain armies and certain players it looks more spread out more like balanced i don't love the intel comp thing um it's something i'm most excited about but i definitely think it's it's better I just want it to be free and <laughs> just put it out on the website, make a PDF, make it so all my players can get it. Um, it's the only like, it's the only like lock on infinity right now. And I think that that's just, you'll sell as, like people buy them still. You know what I mean? But just make them a PDF, make it, make your game accessible, you know, and people will buy more models because they'll want to play your game. All right. Who's ready for some mailbag? I'm in the mailbag in a while. In there, yay! Woo! Been forgotten now. It's been too long. It's been too no, more right. no more mailbags. No mailbags over. No, it's, it's, it's overflowing. It's it's deeply overflowing with stuff. And there's plenty of mailbag. All right, let's hit the mailbag. Uh, we are going to take three of these. I'll once again link the mailbag inside um the description of the podcast. I'll also link it in the tactic awareness section of the tactic awareness Discord, and you guys can check it out. Um, all right, so here we go. First one, Tanako Scholar 22 asks all of us, since the new season's coming up, what are some things you wish to be included in season 15 mission-wise as well as rule-wise? Uh, if this looks at, at after the, 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 if it comes out after this packet drops, what are some hits and misses for the season 15? What do you think they could have done differently? Um, uh, I think we're breaking that down now. I think we just talked about some, <laughs> which is uh, the, I think the, um, the Intelcom thing with uh the mission cards uh and we're about to talk about probably the most controversial mission in the mission pack which is going to be um evacuation so i stay tuned <laughs> you hear all about it i think what do you guys think um from what has been leaked of like the the random mission stuff for that kind of play i'm really excited for that i feel like that would be a really cool way to play your little malifo heart is gonna love that i think <laughs> well, honestly dan like i think when you and i if, like the next time i see you we get to play some infinity i think you and i will probably just play that way <laughs> this it'll be it'll basically just be us playing malifon and infinity table with the rand missions i think it's gonna be cool i agree with you yeah it just it makes it a little more predictable kind of forces you to bring more of an all comers list instead of a more specialist list yeah. you don't know what's going to happen and it's just kind of yeah i think it'd just be a lot of fun and sometimes you'll get screwed by the missions other times you get lucky but also, like for an event point of view, being able to just set the mission up or the table up once, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the mission objectives always stay in the same place. Like just set it up the same way every time, and then the missions are different. 
and you could do like a pool for the events. Like it's oh, gonna be so good. I'm into it. Uh, it's so strange because normally in Infinity, you like you build your list for the missions. Yeah, I know. It's kind of like a unique thing of I know of Infinity, and this kind of throws that on its head. I know, and I love that. I actually think that this plays really well into the way Owen plays Infinity with game with like lists that like do a thing, you know, and then he's got to like cope with. The missions as they come through. I think Owen's missions. I think Owen's army list writing style is going to be the, the the business for for this. Just play it with a plan in mind. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, right there, Raspy, hanging in. Need some wine yeah, to break. All right, all right, good. No, we're good. Well, this one's for you. Uh, Joe Soap asks all slash Owen, would you ever use an active turret Sunday foot with the Asuir and the Shakush existing? Why would you want to? Well, I know you're going to say with the Shakush, but Owen, you, know, you take this one. Um, I mean, probably not, because like the Boktar can't be a Shakura Sunduk butt, but the Sunduk butt can be a little Boktar or Asawara. I don't think either of them are the Asawara. I think the Boktar is the better comparison to the Sunduk yeah, butt. Yeah, I would agree. I think the Asawara is a different class. <clears throat> the Asawara is his own animal because he's cheaper than the two of them, and he's like just as good. The only thing is the two the Sunduk butt and the Bookdar both have mod stacking on their yeah. side. Yeah. And then some shenanigans. Um but I wouldn't take an active turn one purely because if I wanted an active turn Sunduk butt, I'd bring a Bokhtar because he's also a specialist and he also has tack aware and he also he also he also. And because there is no equivalent, there's no other guy that could fill the Sunduk butt's role. So yeah. if I'm gonna bring a Sunduk butt, I'm gonna bring him for the one thing that he can do that the rest of those guys can't. Yeah, my, which my, is kill you on your yeah. turn. And so was gonna, well, that's what I was gonna say. Is I, my 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 like instinct is to agree with you completely, but my reasoning is a bit different. Which is the Sunduk but stack block in active turn actually isn't necessarily as good as those other models, but his stack block married to being in the reactive turn is amazing. You know what I mean? Like if he's an active turn piece, he's just kind of another average fighter. If he's a reactive turn piece with that same stat block, he's incredible. Yeah. Like his whole stop block is designed around not going during your turn. So I think to take him the other way, like I like that it's included as an option, but I think he's actually performing suboptimally when he's not neurocinetic. I think he's just not as good a piece because you can get active turn fighters that are just way better. Yeah, I don't think. In a game but... where AROs are like so important, but also not very good in general compared to like an active turn fighting piece, like the arrows, like, well, I'll throw a couple dice and maybe they'll get lucky. You know, that's kind of like how the arrow feels. And then when you have like an attacking arrow piece, it just kind of changes everything. And uh yeah, and you don't see it coming that. because he plays a shell game in and of himself. He doesn't also need anyone that. to help him. He just goes, did you pick the right one? Ah, no, wasted your time. And that's great. He doesn't need anyone's help to do it either. Yeah, he just tells you you suck and you do exactly yeah so that's my argument i would not do it and those are my reasons why i agree with you <clears throat> all right final final question and we'll move on we got a few left in the tank but you guys go fill this up again andy green asks this is for everybody though mainly me because i'm a tourney organizer ah well, owen is also a tourney organizer now as well uh with its 15 i have a fair few community created missions have you ever designed or want to design some of your own particularly for your own offensive series of tournaments ash I think we should do that this year. I think we should just completely copy Lost Lieutenant's homework <laughs> and do, a, do, do, do our own missions and be like, anything you can do, we can do better. Um, <laughs> I, I would love to do that. I think custom missions are actually a good way to like do like a seasonal event series. Um, and what I think I'd probably do is I would probably do like a, a, a seasonal one sort of based on each of the like events and when they take place. So like do like a fall summer, you know what I mean? Like do like a, do like a series basically like that. And we'd have four for the year and we could all vote on which one we like the best or debate it. Maybe we could all throw some in. We could each do one for each event and then collaborate on the last one. But I think it's a good idea. I like the idea of having it. I think it'd just be something fun and different and it would make the events unique. I don't think it's as important from a gameplay point of view. Although I do think having them thrown in there every now and again as like a meta shaker upper is maybe a good idea. Um, but uh, I do think it's just fun and it makes tournaments feel unique. Like it makes your events unique because people play, you know, the, they play something they don't play all the time. What do you guys think? 
Yeah. I mean, I've I've written a mission before, but it was that zombie mission for Halloween. So it was like a gimmick, but it was a great mission. We need to paint. Actually, I have like a couple hundred zombies. <laughs> Part of that if you want to do a Halloween event. Hmm. Jay just gave Jay just gave me a carrying case of like 108 zombies. <laughs> so we could do something with zombies. Mm, let me think about it <laughs> well that, that's how many slots are in old games which have carrying case it's 108 slot <laughs> thing. That's, that's why i know what that exact number is because <laughs> it's, it's, it's a complete games which have carrying case full of uh full of zombies because that's go. that's what that's what we do is he, he moves the stuff he doesn't want in his basement to the studio um all right so we're done the q a period let's uh let's round this off and we're into the home stretch now with talking about uh, the great, the greatest mission. I think I did the, did I did the last one. I think I did the last one, didn't I? Who wants to take point on this one? There's three of us. There's three missions we're doing this for. So, who wants to have this be their favoriteest of missions? Migration like... sucks. <laughs> Fuck. I'm not gonna play it. Jesus. <laughs> okay. I would not. I won't even play beep pong anymore. Like. Oh, okay. okay that's okay, a death. Okay. okay. Well, you play it to death. That's not the same as like the mission sucks. So, well, so no, back I... That's why I'm of the opinion that the mission sucks, and I will never let it in an event, nor will I play it anymore. Because okay, it's, it's, it's okay, just, Captain Hyperbole. Can we over blah, evacuation, blah. please? <laughs> Okay, I don't know. Me. None of you guys have played in a month. Neither of you. I, but you have. But none of us have played this mission, so it doesn't matter. It does uh-huh. not matter. All right. So this one's mission objectives in because no one's going to do it. So I'm going to do it myself. At the end of the game, for each extracted civilian, you get a, uh, an OP. At the end of the game, for each extracted HVT, you get two. Um, as you deploy on the table, there will be civilians. A total of five civilians in the game table. That means there is five potential points for civilians. There is four for HVTs because there's a uh, friendly and enemy one. And you're trying to vac these off the table. Um, each of the players will deploy two HVTs. I'm oh, sorry, there's four HVTs. So you're, tr- you're trying to capture the opponent's HVTs, not your own, and defend yours. And there's two extraction consoles placed in different halves of the table. Each console is represented by console A or console B. Um, you can activate the extraction console with a specialist. The specialist must be in contact with a communication antenna, and they must be civvy vacked with a civilian or with an enemy HVT, and it allows them to make a normal whip roll. Um, and then they're basically removed from the table when they're considered extracted. So you, you basically punch them into the elevator and get rid of them. So I will I will say, and this is my first comment for this, this is quite possibly the most order-intensive mission I've ever seen in my life. Like just the raw number of goes you have to do to try and achieve town objective points in this is mind-boggling. Like, let's say you wanted to ext- extract all five civilians they're all over the board and there's also an exclusion zone for grabbing them. You're looking at like a minimum. If you start next to two of them, uh, you're looking at a minimum of, you'll say you've got your full 15 and 15 at 45 orders to get the first two off. If you're infiltrated or whatever, you're going to need one to move over onto them and extract them. And that's if you succeed, and then two, three, four to go and dump them into the with a with a whip check into the um the the evacuation thing, and that's each. So that's eight out of forty five for the first two civilians. That's if you get to go first. It's going to be so much more to get across the board and get the far ones, to get the middle ones, and then you also have to go get the enemy HVTs and fight your way through. There is like no margin for error in this mission whatsoever. What do you guys think? Um. You don't have to be a specialist to grab them, but you do so, have to be a specialist to evacuate them. You to evacuate them. So, like logically speaking, you, it's, it just makes it way less order efficient to not be a specialist grabbing them, right? Well, it's like you could grab them to deny them, kind of thing. I think is a legit tactic. Sure, but at, at the same time, like you're so order intensive, anyways. I guess you like, could have a specialist waiting on the objective too, and then just move the case fat guys into base contact with it. Yeah, because they don't have to be. Do they have to be evac to you as well? Do you have to actually be evac to them? Like yes. you, no, yeah. So you have to you have to drop them, and then the then the specialist has to pick them up from where they are, and then he has to evac them. Oh, there you go. Yeah, bullet point three: the special troop must be civvy back to the civilian or with an enemy HVT. Yeah, so you so you do have to have them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, lame. But I think I think this is going to be more or less like the uh, the last launch mission where it's like. Oh, you just got to get everyone off the board to score. And you're like, actually, we just need like one or two. Well, the thing is, you got to get at least five to get a major. 
I guess right? like, if we're looking at this, for, if you're looking at five. like you have to get five. I take it all back. That's what I mean. Like you have to get five points. Like you, if you grab if you grab the two first civilians, you're at two out of five. That means you have to get an HVT and another civilian <laughs> to to get to even just a max score. And it's Wait. all opposed. It's all opposed scoring, right? The civilians you can't get. Like once you launch a civilian, no one else ever gets it. There's no way for your opponent to get it back, and your opponent can no longer get to ten. So every civilian you launch caps your opponent's score by one. So it's like statistic, like it's so hard. Because I'm like thinking, like, okay, who's really fast? And it's like you need like specialist motorcycles. But then what if they're on top of buildings like crap? Right? You need like you need like uh, what's your name, Ryder? <laughs> you need the the Karubi or whatever her name Ryder is from JSA. Karoshi Ryder. Yeah, but then also it's like you can't be a remote to pick or impetuous or a regular. Oh, wait, irregulars can't do it either? No. You can't save you back if you're any of those things because the, the <laughs> civilians won't come with you. You're a freak. You're a dude in a kilt. Swinging a sword on the city streets, right? Like, what if you just if you have, if you, if you, I mean, if you objectively deconstruct what's happening in like the universe at that moment, imagine you've been going to get groceries and a, a giant barbarian with a double handed sword's like, come with me, and then stuffs you into an elevator and shoots you into the sky. Like, it's it's complete madness. Of course, you wouldn't go with that guy. So, I think the big thing is that you can use your opponent's console. In the current um, ITS, you have a drop troop who can show up anywhere along four inches outside their deployment for free, or rather not for free, but for no risk. So your opponent can't null deploy against you because if they do that and you have the drop trooper, which you should be bringing at least one, if he's a specialist, you could land anywhere along the line that their HVT is and then bring it to their pod and kick it out of the bat, right off the bat, if they null deploy you. So if they don't yeah. null deploy, though, then you just kill all the things that null, didn't null deploy and be up on points at the beginning and try and do it on turn two. That's that's my thinking. Yeah, my, my thinking is, you one, you never null deploy in this mission because you have to defend those civilians. You have to make it even just cost orders. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you need to you need to have stand-up, like, throwaway pieces, like flash bots, um, like war cores. Like, you need to have stuff that just makes it cost you a short skill. Because even if because if you're blinded, that guy's entire runs over. He can no longer interact with the civilians. He can no longer interact with the consoles, right? Unless like an engineer goes and gets them. You're just trying to make it cost as many orders as possible. I think you're right about the um, special drop troops. I think like guys like Raziats and um, Hellcats with the plus three mod for their jump are going to need their that. weight in gold in this. You don't need the plus. You just pass. Oh, that's right. Well, sorry, one can. You're right. Yeah, right. one can. Yeah, but I'm thinking true. you have that one guy who is either a turn two or turn three, or if you can kill your opponent's active stuff, uh, turn one, he lands anywhere near their HVT and then just spend five orders and get out. And you can die after that. Mission accomplished. I got your HVT. You are now fighting for your life to catch up. Wait, you get two per each enemy of HVT, right? Right. Get so at least theory, one. It could grab one, walk over, grab the second one, go to the console and evacuate them both. And you can hold two. You, you can hold. You still have to evacuate guys. each time. You have to do two evac rolls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. But, so but you can grab both, like the civilians and the HVTs on that side of the table, if you can get them. But wait, you deploy your own HVTs where you want them, though, right? Sure, yeah. This is one game where you don't put your HVTs on the side of the table. Like your HVTs are going to be in the thick of your army, if possible, defended by some kind of like arrow piece. Well, you bet they're going to be on the side yeah. of the table. I can put so? them right at the edge, and then there, there are that many more orders to get back to a button. Uh, I guess as long as you're watching it, yeah. As, as long as you're watching that table side, nobody can like parachute us next to it and then come grab them. That's not that's right. not a bad idea actually. The table, the table is kind of a defensive spot because now it's like, yeah, you can bring a drop trooper and he could walk in right on the side there. But the turn that you walk in, if you want to walk in near him, I'm watching and I'll yeah. get a free yeah, somebody, shot. Somebody you. suppressing your own HVTs. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> both of them stay next to each other with like three guys in suppression watching them. You're like the HVTs are like, why? Why are you having three, one point of guns three, at me? Three like, fusiliers just like lining them up. <laughs> your bait, yeah. son. Your Ooh, bait. Jesus. Um. Yeah. No, I think you're. I think you're right with that one, Owen. Um. So now it's the part where we have to try and make lists to accomplish this mission. So I say we try it with our last year's armies. So I'm gonna do Corregidor. Do you want to do? Steel uh, flying, doesn't even or... change. <laughs> Which list? Or... Hawk? <coughs> yeah. 
a new hack yeah the only difference you... is whether or not you bring a book to what about star model or o12 you think uh because of exclusion zone and efficiency of orders I, vanilla seems like so hard to play yeah at any <laughs> so time. too yeah yeah agreed which is unfortunate but uh it is what it is well, i think i think Craigador can do it uh, I think they are great at this, to be honest. Uh, let's see what we got here. Because I think I can do that. And I can do that. God, you can get so many Hellcats for so cheap. So I'm going to say two Hellcats. You need... I wish you could take... If I was playing not, if I was playing Bakuna instead of Corregidor, actually, um, all the Senators would be great for this to defend the HVTs. Um, but instead, I think we use... Someone equally annoying like Miranda Size to go grab the close ones. Is there ever a time Miranda Size aren't the answer? No, Ash, there isn't. Um, actually, Carlotta is not a terrible idea either. Is Moriarty a specialist? Is the question. He is not, but he's damn good at grabbing people. So maybe we drop a Hellcat, we take a Carlotta with Moriarty because, yeah, we do. And Moriarty just just stands around stopping people and then how about the one remote you can't take in this faction which i still think is stupid <laughs> uh motorized bounty hunters are actually not terrible in this either are they specialists oh sorry it's ics you can't take them uh they are not specialists and then uh, we need more fast movers there is no gecko specialist there is a million wildcat specialists because of course there is. And I think you go NCO and let's say engineer and pair them with everyone's favorite fast moving killing machines, the Vostoks. Uh, and then I actually don't think you need a big army in this one, but to get there, last but not least, we got the man, the legend senior massacre, because he's got eclipse, which gets you to whoever you want to grab. And who can you pair him up with that is, oh, well, why not just take another Wildcat? Because <laughs> they're also wild cards. And actually, so is the Vostok. So we just make it, we make Senior Massacre the bar team leader. <laughs> and we have the Vostok, uh, the Wildcat, and Massacre as a, um, a whatchamacallit, a, uh, a single fire team. And then, I don't know, the Wildcat and the Vostok are... Hanging out with somebody else. Nah, I think that's it. Yeah, we got 10 orders. That's <laughs> such a stupid list, but it's so small. It's a Hellcat Hacker, Hellcat Paramedic, two more ends. Um, and then Carlotta Kowalski, a Wildcat NCO, a Vostok, Senior Massacre, Wildcat Engineer, and another Vostok. So you had a, a, basically a, a Harris with um, the Vostok and Senior Massacre, and then a duo with the Wildcat and the Vostok. And that's 10 orders. Just 10 orders, one group. Going, going big, just getting everybody home if you can. What about you guys? What do you got? Uh, I've got <clears throat> more than 10 orders. Uh, we've sure got do. Gulam, Lieutenant, plus one command token, because I need every order I can get. Well, I don't even have a Lieutenant. That's a good point. <laughs> I should probably figure uh, that out. Matt, you'll need that one. Uh, let's see if I can post a picture of this. I did it on my phone, but maybe I can do it on here. Uh, no, I can't. Uh, so Gulam plus one command token, Bereed Hacker, Killer Hacker, Trinity, Doctor. That's my that's my link in my <laughs> assassin list. Uh, and a Jaren Engineer with a Nazmat. Now that he can do even more work with that Nazmat, great. Two Sunduck butts, Neurosynetic plus one burst viral rifles, Fide, and a Jammer Mutt as group one. So we've got seven regular orders and then the irregular impetuous from the Mutt. Group two is another Fide uh, with two Camilles, the Fenus remote. So those are the, the the nothing remotes. A Mutt with a Jammer and a Bokhtar NCO parachutist paramedic with a boarding shotgun plus one burst ND charges. And the name of the game is Sunduck Butts and uh, Mutts with Jammers are protecting my civilians and HVTs that are on my half of the board. And the um, 
Bokhtar teaming up with the Fides are picking people up and dragging them back. Because I start on my opponent's half of the board right off the get-go. And if the Bokhtar needs to kill people, he is two wounds, armor four, MSV, mimetism, shock immune, super jump, boarding shotgun, burst three, viral pistols. Like, he'll do the job. All the work. Yeah. And he's six two. Nice. So. Well, my, my legal list... <laughs> <laughs> as I have uh, reevaluated, um, is 12 orders actually, because I had not deleted some things when I started talking. So now it's actually Jazz and Billy, um, Helicopter Paramedic, Carlotta and Moriarty, a Wildcat Lieutenant, uh, a Aguasil Paramedic, and a Vostok, so another Harris, and then a Senior Massacre Wildcat Vostok is another Harris. Um, and then we got two Moran repeaters with combi rifles to watch the HVTs. Because they've got all the things. They got crazy qualities put next to the HVTs. They've got suppressing with their um, uh, kind of rifles, and of course they can hack too, because uh, Jazz can can hack through the repeaters. So there it is. It's actually twelve orders this time. <laughs> I didn't bother with anybody who can't pick up a uh, a, a body if they have to, um, except for the boss docs, and they're the only things that can't. And Jazz, and, sorry, Billy and um, and Moriarty can't either, but they can mine things, flash pulse things, slow everything down. Um, and we're, we're, we're actually legal as next. We have, we have an actual lieutenant. There we go. What about you, Dan? Um, I'm still building it, but I have to make a few more decisions, but come back to me in a sec. Well, this is the end of the episode, so there's no coming back. We two Sundog butts and two Jammer Mutts will make it basically impossible for my opponent to come after my stuff. Unless just for horrendously bad. Just for like the order sink yeah. of like digging them out. Like that's the thing is in this machine, you don't really need to kill. You need to buy tons of time. Like you need to get ahead in a way that they can't catch up to and then buy a bunch of time. Cause it's kind of, I think Dan's correct when he said it's kind of like evacuation or last launch story um, where you're just trying to play to a certain point and then keep them out of the room. Keeping your HVTs locked up is, I think, how you win this one. Like, I, I might even put both HVTs shoved up on the like left or right, depending on yeah, the Yeah, just frame. together. Yeah. And then both Sunduck butts are just going to sit on them. Yeah, just be like, like, hey, bro. <laughs> and then the rest of the army can die getting all of the civilians that you can back to your, your button. Yeah. Or, and I mean, again, it's just going to be, if you let me go first, my fides are just going to pick up the civilians and leave right off the get-go. I'm going to coordinate... And I'm just going to walk back to my base. And even if we don't evacuate them on turn one, we'll just have them hanging out for when I get it on turn two. Yeah, the civilians being opposed points is... Yeah, that's a lot. The fact that the civilians... Like, the civilians are basically like the Pac-Man dots and the HPTs are the cherries. But you could just win by getting the dots. I don't know. It's a lot of... It's a lot of, like... I, it feels like a mission that is never going to really go past three or four points. And it's going to tie a lot, too. Just not super satisfying. Dan, do we buy enough time? Almost, almost. We're so close. <laughs> Taste so it. So close. Well, I'm, I'm just going to talk about uh, next week, then, and just slow roll the credits. Um, so <laughs> Dan can come in as a stinger. So uh, next week, we're going to be doing uh, Last Launch, which I still really like. I, I played it now once, but... I, I didn't get bored of it. It was thematic. I like room missions in general. Um, so I, I do think this one's a cool one. I think it it feels like what the story is trying to do. And we'll break that down as well. We'll take more from the mailbag. So don't forget to go and add more questions in there. Um, and we will uh, follow on with our hopefully news coverage of new and exciting things coming out. Uh, and that is it for me. What about you guys? You got anything that's, that's planned for next week? I have a list. Yeah, there it goes. What'd you take? It's not good, but okay. So, I have a, I just have a shit ton of specialists <laughs> because there's no downside to making bringing specialists, right? I mean, you're doing better than me if you got a lieutenant. Wait, who's my lieutenant? Oh yeah, yeah, I have one. I have one. <laughs> it's one of my raven. I would have been so happy if you'd forgotten to put one in after I went through. All <laughs> that. No, I got the green check mark. I got the green check mark. That means there's a lieutenant in there somewhere. All right, so Casanova infiltration. And hear me out. He is good, guys. Hear me out. Andromeda infiltration. 
with the submachine gun. You're just gonna roll it? Oh fuck yeah. <laughs> they they might rule in this mission. I'll be honest with you. I think Here's they might the be thing. good. If you go first, you got like between the 50-50 of both of them, you're up at like a 75% chance, dice wise, that one of them makes it on the other side. They're both uh they're both specialists. Um and they can either wreak havoc on the back line or if or they can grab something and run away with it. Uh Crusher with the combat jump. He's also a built-in specialist with a boarding shotgun. Because that's the only thing. He's a bit pricey, but he does have uh um no wounding cap and mimetism. So you know, there's some chance of him doing stuff. So it's like that's one guaranteed person on the other side, and hopefully one other gets through. Maybe both if you get lucky. I'm and then I, have, then I have a core of three Kappas, two Ford Observers, and a Paramedic, uh, all with combi rifles, and then two Raven Eyes with uh, the EM mines. And their job is kind of like they can move up as a core, uh, and then when is needed, they just start grabbing shit and running backwards. But at least they can get up that far and maybe go on suppression or something or just kind of be aware or I don't know. They exist. Got a flashball spot. Then I got a log keeper with two side bots. Just the specialist with a combi rifle and chain rifle. And just with the side bots, they're kind of just they can just exist around the other ones and you just have to deal with heavy riot stoppers all the time if you're trying to get up around and grab those things. And the second group, I have a small Harris of a heavy machine gun, heavy rocket launcher, Neokas. Um, and then because they got climbing plus, they can kind of get up and be where they need to be. And then a Tiangu jammer for 22 points. Um, just one of those things where as you're running up to try to grab things, that guy can jammer you from around the corner to just prevent more people from grabbing you either HVTs or whatever. And then another lock keeper with two side bots, the same thing with combi rifle. And so I only got two swick. I'm kind of really reliant on, on Casanova and Drama to doing something up close. The Crusher, I don't really have a ton of. I have one heavy machine gun and a heavy rocket launcher, I guess. But it's kind of, I don't know. It's kind of like this weird, weird list. But I think with the Lawkeeper and all the side bots, they can like play really, really good defense. Um, but they're also 8-6 movement specialists that can go grab things if needed as well. So, wait, are you allowed to go sit in the back if you have peripherals? No, I don't believe so. Well, then I suicide the side bots. <laughs> and hey, man, you clear you clear koalas, you clear mines with them. Like just guard yeah, yeah. them. They're, they're just they're good little four point guys that are super good on defense if you're going second to protect your HVTs. And then yeah, I kind of liked it. I kind of want to play this list. It'll Do it. I think you and Owen should play each other in this mission with these lists. Okay. But I don't want to play against Hakus Law. It's scary. No, you have to. You have no choice. But you, you have all the side bots you need to destroy his hosts of things that explode. And to discover know. all discover Look, all the you, sonic bots with them. You have a suicide biometric visor. You'll be fine. And I don't also, have any biometric visor. You can intuitive attack oh. sticky stuff into them. I guess that's true. You can intuitive sticky the sonic bots, and then they're screwed. Yeah, but they're like Fizz 14. They're just going to pass. They're yeah. gone. They're Fizz 14. Maybe. They'll just endure it. I mean, sure, maybe. You can try. But maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe you get the Sonic Buds dead. You might. We I, did it. I hate Owen's Hakalon list. It's I know so... you do, but that's why you have to. You have to figure out how to beat it. It's your. This is your moment, man. Get get after it. This is your Ivan Drago. You really sounded like the Big Lebowski there. I know, man. I'm your the moment, dude. man. I'm the dude, man. I'm not. I'm not the Big Lebowski. I'm the dude. Um, what it is we did it? Another episode of season two, yeah. Episode two, season two, double deuce. Night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Hooray. Good night. <laughs> oh, I can go die. <laughs>